each of you have touched on different tough things that you've gone, gone through, challenges, and each of you have just spoken about what, how you overcame them. And I'd like each of you, we'll go start with Lisa and Nellie and Beth, just openly to share what you went through, your challenge, and speak about how God brought you through and how today you stand a victor. Okay, so, you know, I actually carried my youngest son for nine months with cancer and I did not know it. Mm -hmm. And so I gave birth to him. And when he was three weeks old, I just woke up really sick one morning and they rushed me to the emergency room. And after ruling out so many different things, there was a doctor who walked in and he said, you know what? I know what's wrong with you. When nobody else could figure it out, he walked in and he said, I know what's wrong with you. Mm -hmm. So a couple of days later, he walked and just imagine, I'm only 33 at the time. I had a four-year-old and I have this three-week-old baby and he walks in and he says, I have to do emergency surgery to remove your left kidney. And I looked at him and I went, oh no, I don't have time for that. I have to go home and take care of my babies. And he said to me, but if I don't, you'll be gone within three to four months. And That's I'm telling you, you have not felt pain until you are faced with the challenge of possibly leaving your children so young. And so I thank God because he went home and he said, I'm going to pray and I'm going to ask God, should I just remove the tumor or should I take the whole kidney? He says, I'll let you know what God says tomorrow. Oh, so he walked into my hospital room and he said, God said, take the whole kidney. So they did. And this is why I am 22 years cancer free. Now, I only had a limited amount of time to be home to recover. And uh, we were, you know, a young couple. We had just bought a home. And uh, I always dibbled and dabbled in making desserts. And while I was home, my mom said to me, why don't you sell your desserts? So out of that, what seemed like a dark place is how I birthed my dessert business that I have been running for 22 years. So sometimes we think that something is coming to destroy us, but it was something mm -hmm. that came to really bless me. Awesome, yes. awesome story, awesome story. All right, my wonderful, beautiful Nelly. I know that you have yes. a story in your heart. You've spoken about some challenges that you've gone, gone through mm -hmm. and just to share from, from your heart your dark moment and how God brought you out of it. Mm. Well, yes, God is still working in me. And I just see the beauty that is coming out. Um, you know, I, I guess I never realized that I, I struggle with depression and depression and just self doubt. And I never imagined, how did I even get here? Um, and just spending time with reading my Bible. I never really understood what my mom would always say. Do you read your Bible? And I'm like, whatever. I don't have time for that. And I think just trying it out and reading the Bible and didn't know where to begin. And, you know, I always felt that somebody else knew more and I can't really go to Bible study because then I don't really know anything. And, you know, I just started and I started going to Bible study and I just started to feel this piece of um, welcoming from my other sisters in Christ. I never knew that just going and just being open could even evolve into more growth, right? It's just that anxiety of, you know, being the overachiever and knowing everything, right? It's like, you don't know this thing. And then when I decided to make that commitment, and despite um, just the workload of patients running around, I mean, I went to um, different churches for Bible study. And when I say I left my office in the evening hour, instead of going home, and from that small little experience just blossomed into this beautiful thing. Who would have thought that? I'm so proud to say that the practice that I have is not just a multi-million dollar practice, but it's birthed so many different businesses from it that the right people showed up at the right time, that those people developed other businesses from the source that I've given them. So self-doubt and depression no more. I actually call myself the mom. I'm the mom of my young and mature uh, employees that work for me. So I'm just so proud.
And, um, you know, I just think self-doubt, self-depression is truly a lie that God has a plan and a perfect plan for each and every person out there, Amen. that it is in the power of the Holy Spirit that he creates all people to come together in their own different way, in their special way. And together we create this huge union. I can't even speak enough. Well, enough jump in before she starts <laughs> preaching a message. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna jump into Beth and Beth just I know that you've you've all I, one thing I love about you, Beth, that you're always so open, open about your challenges, your challenges and struggles. Just share about your your challenge, your struggle, and how God brought you through and how you are now an overcomer. Yes, yes. So uh, I grew up Catholic. I had 30 years of Catholicism and I always had this image of an angry God. I always thought mm. that I was in trouble with God, that I was gonna go to hell about 10 times a day. I didn't understand the story of grace and redemption and complete unforgiving, unconditional love, right? And so um, in the midst of my uh, first divorce, I was um, 24. Um, my daughter's dad had just moved us seven hours away from family, from friends. I had a new baby and I had a new job. I had postpartum depression and didn't know it. So Olivia, my baby girl who's now 24, was not even two years old. And he moved us away and then he left us. He went back to the state where we were and I was left alone and I thought, I can do this. I will raise her on my own. I will work really hard. I'll move out of this house that I can't afford on my own. I'll do this thing. And that is when in the midst of all that, I was diagnosed with leukemia and they said, there's no cure. You're probably gonna die. And much like Lisa said, all I could think was, my baby girl's never gonna know me. She's not gonna have a mother. She's not gonna know who I am. She's not gonna know how much I love her. And so I went in the back of a Catholic church at this strange town where I had only been for a short time and I didn't even know what to say to God. I was mad, I was sad, but I also felt like I deserved it because I was in, you know, sinning, right? Divorce is sin. This is all the things that were in my head. And so I said to the doctor, I don't want to deal with this. This is inconvenient for me. I don't want to have this, take it away, get rid of it. Whatever I have to do, just get rid of it. I need to be here for my daughter. And they said, there's no cure. You could try a bone marrow transplant, but good luck with that because not many people make it. And I'm like, well, what's option C? And they said, there isn't one. So I had a bone marrow transplant. I was 25 years old. I was in the hospital for 35 days. I was the only person that made it out of there alive. I watched everybody else in that hospital around me die from the same diagnosis, the same cancer that I had. And my head just kept looking at God going, what did they do, right? Like if I'm this terrible sinner and I am being punished for, through cancer and they're dying from it, boy, how bad of a sinner are they? Mm -hmm. Couldn't understand it. So all those years later, I went back to school. I studied, I got a couple degrees in theology because I knew my Catholicism while it gave me sentimentality and an understanding of church, it did not give me an understanding of Jesus. It did not give me an understanding of the relationship and the friendship and the unconditional, all the time forgiveness that is offered to us if we are in relationship with him. And then when I started to study about Paul, I'm like, look, this guy took 17 years after Damascus to get it. So I think I'm ahead of schedule. <laughs> I love it. Mm -hmm. I want to thank each of you for being so open, so giving of your stories. I have just two more questions and we are done, I promise. One of the things that makes my heart just sing about all three of you is that, you know, one may say they've gone through stuff, but not only can you say you've overcome stuff, but you now have something big that God is doing through you. So in just one minute, I just want each of you just to speak about what God is doing in your in and through you now. Not alone, speak about it. Just one thing that you can share. Because I actually really want this uh, piece to just speak to those people who are going through things to see that there can be light coming out of the dark yeah. tunnel. So we'll go from Lisa, Nellie, and then Beth. What's God doing in, in your life right now? You know, God is using me to add value to other people. Mm -hmm. I didn't start uh, all things by Lisa, the cooking, the baking part, the um, my cookie store. God has me taking that money, and I'm. You're probably gonna think I'm crazy, but my husband understands. I take that money and I don't spend it on myself. Mm. If I see you on my page and you mention that you're sick then I send you a joy box, which consists of cookies and things that will encourage you. And I've even given out Dr. Francesca's book. Uh, I gave away my copies to encourage somebody else. So right now, all things by Lisa, people don't realize that when they're ordering cookies from me, they're helping me add value to random people. 
God has me blessing people that I don't know from anywhere. But mm -hmm. if I see them and I, uh, through my post or through my page or I hear a story, then I'm just taking and I'm blessing them. And I count it an honor to be the hands and feet of God because mm -hmm. we know that we have entertained angels unseen. You know, mm -hmm. the person that's walking past and they seem a little downtrodden and then all of a sudden I send my husband down to ring their bell and go, hey, Lisa baked you a dozen of cookies. The joy that comes on their face. You don't know what that person was getting ready to do. They might have been super depressed and felt like nobody loved them. Mm -hmm. So right now in this season, I just keep asking God, who am I supposed to minister to? Mm -hmm. Who am I supposed to give to? And so this is the joy that I have on the other side of coming out of all that I have been through. He has blessed me just to give. Amen. Lisa, <laughs> turn over to you, Nellie. Um, after going through the, the challenges and the struggles, what's God doing in your life today as a victor? Um, I love God. I love the power of the Holy Spirit. I love what he's doing in my life. Um, wow. He is working in my heart. You know, I think some people look at me and like, you talk to everybody. <laughs> and that's just because I feel like, um, you know, God is opening up my heart you know I think for a long time my heart was kind of like tight because unforgiveness and I'm free of I don't know I, I just I don't have time to have that like weight and that holding on and, and, and until things that are just not even important and because of that you know practicing dentistry to me is such a joy even it's just even a greater joy you know um that I don't just talk to my patients about their teeth. I get to know my patient that I am now creating my, uh, the, my, my patient's most favorite things. You see, it's the power of connection. It's the realness of communication that from that, you know, I'm starting a dental assisting program, which will grow into different states. Um, but it's like, I get all these, you know, things given back to me because I'm giving it away. Like I said, John 12, 48, I know who God just created, right? I say it like that because it's kind of funny, right? Before I did not know, I think that's why self-doubt kicked in. I was always trying to understand like, what is, why, why do I feel this way? Confusion, confusion and unsettlingness and everything that someone said, maybe it's stuck in my head, right? Man, that doesn't bother me, you know? So I say God is working in me, through me, to open up and be free. You know, just be free. Talk to whoever. I prayed for a homeless person um, on the street, and I, tracks on her arms. The power of the prayer came out that I was just tired. And I never, will never forget. She looked me in my eyes and said, and she was shaking, no one's ever cared for me like that. I said, wow, just prayer alone. So because I feel open and free, I can go anywhere. I feel like I can talk to anybody. You know how that is? Because God has created each and every one of us. So even though sometimes, you know, some people could be a little bit off that day and like, rah, it doesn't phase me because guess what? I can be the same way too on a day, right? But that is God's creation. And I treat God that creation, that person, just as God will want me to treat them. No different. I treat my patients with tender care because that is God's creation. I tell them everything that I'm going to do. And if something goes wrong, I'm not afraid to say, hey, listen, I'm telling you this is what happened, right? There's nothing to hide, you see? Because God's creation is right there. And he knows. I know him. He's looking at <laughs> Look at me. So I'm like, all right, I got this. I got this. I'm going to do right. I'm going to do right. <laughs> so beautiful. So, but, you know, it's just that. Just that. So beautiful. Can I also say I love you, Dr. Nelly Silver? <laughs> mm -hmm. I love you. Receive, receive. I love you. And Beth, mm -hmm. and Beth, you know, me and you, Beth. <laughs> yeah. So I love when you do that. After all you've gone through, just what's God doing in your heart, in your life right now? 
Yeah, and I'll tell you guys, I left a 25 year corporate career that was um, by worldly standards successful. And when I did that to go work at a homeless shelter, people literally looked at me and said, are you crazy? You have it so good. And I'm like, my heart is not filled because God was working on me over and over and over. And I had this nagging feeling that I should be doing something else because that is what he wired me to do, to use my experiences, to give back to people, to pour into them, to say, you matter too. You know what? And it, you are experiencing a circumstance of homelessness. You are not a homeless person. We experience a circumstance of depression or of cancer. We are not depressed people or cancerous people. We are people that God made in his image. And so what he's doing through me is changing my heart, my desires, my understanding of the world and the way to show up in it. And so I wrote my story. And ever since I put that out there and became as vulnerable as I have ever been, mm -hmm. um, it's open doors. And my book is called Remorseless. And so I have a show called Remorselessly Biblical, where I teach people about the Bible and in a way that doesn't shame them, um, in a way that makes them feel connected to God. So I'm connected to women around the globe through a, a program called, or a, a TV syndication called Life Network for Women. And I get on there and teach on, on a program called Remorselessly Biblical. Like remorseless, the word means without guilt in spite of wrongdoing. And what I'm really trying to tell people is that you are forgiven. You have done wrong. We have all done wrong, but it doesn't render you stuck on your journey because God has so much more in store for you. Mm. Beautiful. Awesome. Well, we'll wrap up with each of you just sharing one verse of scripture that means a lot to you mm -hmm. and why. We'll start with Lisa. Just one mm -hmm. verse of a scripture that means a lot to you and why. Well, you know, it's John 11 and 4. <laughs> <laughs> And anytime anyone comes to me and they say, listen, I've been diagnosed with this or I'm not feeling well or whatever the case is, the first thing I say to them is that this sickness will not end in death, but that the son of man might be glorified because mm -hmm. I just believe that no matter what, right? Because to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So no matter mm -hmm. what the outcome is of that sickness, if you die in Christ, you're a winner. Mm -hmm. Love you, love you, love you, love you, my sister. <laughs> my uh, beautiful Nelly. What's that verse that speaks to your heart and why? Wow. Lisa, I love that. Nice. <laughs> Fantastic. You know, mine, mine, mine is John 12, 48. You know, I heard it. I said, you know, I didn't know myself. I was always self-dating myself, right? You know? And um, I realized what God's gift what a beautiful gift he gave me. I'm like, are you kidding me? Don't get out of here. <laughs> you know, to whom much is given, much is required. He's given me such a great blessing. How could I throw it away? Wasting. So, you know, for those out there who have, you know, I only am limited to this. That thing is what we need in this world. To whom much is given, that thing has been given to you to connect and grow and create such an abundance. That's what we're supposed to have in this world. Nothing but goodness. So even for those out there that feel like, you know, I'm on social media and the person has more than me, or, you know, we sometimes can lose that focus, right? Somebody has something that you don't have, you have something, you have a blessing. To whom much is given, much is required. You know, maybe you may not necessarily have that skill set that somebody else does, but guess what? If you have the vision of something you want to create, align with somebody else. It's called partnership. To whom much is given, that puzzle piece is waiting for another puzzle piece oh, to beautiful. be created. Beautiful. To whom much is given, much is required. Beautiful. Coming to you, Beth, we're going to wrap up with you. What verse of scripture? speaks to your heart and why. Yeah, so, so many, but I would say the one for me is Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. Um, I am a doer, I am a mover, I don't sit well. And so Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 says, come to me all you who are weary and I, Jesus, will give you rest. Mm -hmm. wow. And so that is the verse, this is why it means so much to me, you guys, is my mom, when she found out that I was sick, said the only thing that got her through was Jesus, was sitting there and saying, I have got to go to him because I am weary. My daughter is dying. I am weary. I am exhausted. I don't know what else to do. And I think sometimes in this world, you guys, so many things press down upon us. 
that if we just forget to stop and to say, where do I turn, that we make wrong decisions or we feel worse about things. Instead, Jesus says, just come to me. Mm. Just come to me. I got you. I got you. I will give you rest. I know you're weary, but when you're with me, I will give you everything you need in that moment to get through it and to continue to carry on in your journey. So I remember that all the time. Awesome, awesome. I want to thank all three of you for being so open and sharing your stories. I know that many people are going to be impacted by each of you. Well, everyone, you've heard from my three beautiful guests. You heard them speak to you about their struggles they went through. And guess what? You also heard them speak about how Jesus got them out of their struggles. And know what? The same way he did for them, he can do for you. And you say to me tonight, you don't know Jesus. You've not invited him into your heart. Well, guess what? You can invite him into your heart tonight. Jesus loves you so much and he proved it. He died on the cross for you and you can receive him into your heart for he loves you so much. My favorite verse in the whole Bible is John 3, 16. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Now, whosoever, anyone who believes this message should not perish, but have everlasting life. Would you like to receive him, Jesus, into your heart? I'll go ahead and pray with you. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I believe with all of my heart that you are Lord. I confess it tonight that you are Lord. I believe you died for me. You died for me and you paid for all my sin. And tonight I receive the gift of eternal life. I make you Lord of my life. And I thank you for using Lisa and Nellie and Beth to speak to me tonight. And I thank you that just the same way you bless these three women, that you have also blessed me. And I receive all of the blessings in Jesus' name.